As you're about to find out, Antonio wants justice to be served, but would prefer to have a hand in the action himself. Cincinnati 911, what is the address of your emergency? I found a dead body. Deshaun Brown is accused of murdering Nitisha Lattimore and her son Nilo in 2020. Investigators say Brown barbarically killed her three-year-old son Nilo, throwing him into the river while alive. Yeah, it's my heart to know my son out there and I can't bring his body home. I get frustrated and I get angry. No closures. You just heard why Deshaun Brown from Cincinnati, Ohio is facing the death penalty. The date is June 23rd, 2022, and Deshaun Brown is standing before the judge, ready to receive his sentence. Emotions are bubbling in the courtroom, as in attendance we have Antonio Hughes, the former boyfriend of Natisha and grieving father of Nilo. Antonio is understandably still reeling from the loss of his child, especially because his three-year-old boy's body could never be found. His father said at this point, he's even considered hiring professional divers or renting a boat in desperation. I gotta think about Nilo, just being in a river and his body can never be buried. As you're about to find out, Antonio wants justice to be served, but would prefer to have a hand in the action himself, quite literally. And that is exactly what he does, getting in a few good punches on Deshaun's head and neck before the bailiffs pull him away. After a short struggle, they manage to handcuff Antonio and help him up to his feet. There's pain in his eyes, but after he watches the bailiffs switch the handcuffs on Deshaun, you can see the rage returning. Even though his hands are bound behind his back, he tries to go in for one last attack. It takes four bailiffs to hold Antonio and wrestle him to the ground. He was eventually escorted out and was charged in contempt of court. Deshaun has been in prison on a $1 million bail awaiting his next trial date on October 17th. He's being charged with two counts of murder, one count each of felonous assault, gross abuse of a corpse, and tampering with evidence. He faces the death penalty. Deshaun Brown, you deserve the death penalty for what you did to my grandson and my daughter. You deserve the death penalty. No mercy, none. So, can we really blame Antonio for his attack, or should he have let justice take its course? This scumbag deserves to be in hell. He needs to burn in hell. Watch closely. It only takes a moment. Violence erupts inside a Hamilton County courtroom. It took just seconds for the fighting to begin, and just moments later, the court officers rushed in. The witness, who was in police custody, attacked a defendant standing in front of a judge. Eric McCullough is charged with criminal homicide and aggravated assault after he allegedly stabbed his niece, Taisha, as well as another man, Antoine Lee. This all happening earlier this month. This is 25-year-old Antoine Lee, the witness to the murder. Oh, did we mention that he was also the boyfriend of Teicha? Antoine is in court to testify against Eric, but Antoine has plans to seek revenge of his own. He darts at Eric and wastes no time as he swings at the back of Eric's head. He gets in a few decent blows despite being handcuffed. All of this happened within a few feet of the judge who was clearly caught off guard by the altercation. The fight was broken up quite quickly, but you can see another bailiff attempting to stop some other men who tried to get involved. One of them is heard muttering, I'll kill you, which we assume is towards Eric, who seems noticeably shaken before the bailiff escorts him out. They then detain Antoine and wait for things to cool down. As fate would have it, Antoine was sadly killed in 2019 after someone opened fire during a gunfight in his Grove Street neighborhood. Eric is spending his life behind bars while Antoine ultimately lost his. Another reminder that crime doesn't pay in the long run. Police say 50-year-old Jamie Thomas Flowers was killed inside her home in Muskegon Heights after a fight with her husband 
over cigarettes. He was irritable and said that he was a grown man. If he wanted to buy cigarettes, he would buy cigarettes. Prosecutors say Jamie Thomas Flowers was shot multiple times by her husband, Vashon Flowers, and one of those shots was at close range. Actually, I heard, you don't have to do this, Faishan. Please don't do this. You don't have to do this. And then I heard gunshots. This is 46-year-old Vashon Flowers from Muskegon Heights, Michigan, who is on trial for the murder of his wife, 50-year-old Jamie Thomas Flowers. This isn't his first time being in a courtroom, having been convicted of four previous crimes. This is London Thomas, son of Jamie, the victim. You can see him leaning on the banister, glaring towards Vachon. As soon as Vachon's lawyer approaches him, London leaps with style over the rail and rushes to attack. He gets tripped up as he's only a foot away, which gives the closest bailiff time to catch up and pull him back. Several other bailiffs join in as they attempt to hold him back too. You can clearly see that London is trying to get away from them, but that only causes the bailiffs to use extra force as they drag him away finally managing to detain him. Vachon was sentenced to life in prison, although he attempted to appeal the decision, still claiming he was not guilty, despite being the one to turn himself in. While London wasn't able to get his hands on Vachon himself, we expect that there will be plenty of readily available hands waiting for him behind bars as he serves out his life sentence. This case is just a little bit different as a shackled Christopher Elwell of Dover, New Hampshire is being escorted to the back of the courtroom. He was just given his sentence of seven and a half to 15 years in prison for molesting a little girl. This is Josiah Davies, another convict who is waiting for his own sentence hearing to commence. As Christopher is escorted to be seated on the same bench as Josiah, you can see the clear disgust and anger come across his face. Even though these two men do not know each other, and even though Josiah is also shackled, he still goes in to attack Christopher with the only weapon he has available to him, his head. Almost as quickly as his face turns to anger, Josiah turns to headbutt Christopher in the face, getting in a few knocks before a sheriff tackles him and pins him against the bench. Christopher shrugs off the attack, but if you take a closer look, you can see his evil smirk, knowing that he riled up another convict, almost as though he's proud of himself. While Josiah is being detained, Christopher is escorted out of the courtroom. Josiah was charged for the assault, which was combined with his existing forgery charges. We don't condone violence, but in this case, we applaud Josiah for using his head to dish out some justice. This is 22-year-old Lindy Jones from Orangeburg, South Carolina. The previous day, he pleaded guilty to the killing of 18-year-old Willie Jr. Antoine Fields. Lindy shot Willie four times in August of 2019, and then Lindy and his brother disposed of the body in a nearby forest. This is the father of the victim, Willie Clay Fields, who stands with grieving family members as they attend Lindy's sentence hearing. Willie Jr. was the only son of Willie Sr. and his wife, making this loss even more tragic. Let's take a look at how this final attack unfolded. Shortly after the sentence hearing is underway, Willie Sr. rushes forward in a direct beeline towards Lindy. You can see that he catches the bailiff off guard as he passes by, managing to throw a hard punch, striking Lindy in the jaw. He then pushes Lindy towards the ground and continues hammering down with more punches before the bailiff manages to intervene. Another bailiff steps in to help pull Willie Sr. away while Lindy gets back to his feet. He appears to step towards Willie Sr., but a female officer holds him back and begins guiding him to the other side of the room. Another family member is held back by a bailiff, and you can see him pointing towards Lindy as he hurls threats in his direction. Willie Sr. was charged with assault and contempt of court, but Lindy did not want to pursue pressing charges. On July 20th, 2022, Lindy was sentenced to life in prison.